the real silence. Silence of the crickets. Boy, oh boy. Interrupting the current Corona cricketude to bring you behind the woodshed. This is BTWRLM367. I hope those numbers are right. I always think about that as I'm saying them. Anyway, here we are again, folks. And I just don't understand this insanity. And despite what is said by the sustainable lords of the coronavirus church, folks, open your eyes. Thou shalt not make a coronavirus an idol, and thou shalt not bow down before it to serve them. Or do you have the faith of crickets? Oh, boy. Ugh. Are you content to trade your inheritance for a bowl of pottage? Is that what we're doing here? We all complain. We see all the nonsense, and we just keep complaining. You know, a few people rise up and protest, but protest that you see is not action. And I was thinking about the broadcast here coming into the year and moving on till now. I'm surprised almost almost five months now. The, I think this will play fairly well. This will age well into the future. It won't age well when it points out that no one had to suffer all this stuff. The evidence is clearly around us. In fact, I was just coming off of the Twitter, just moving into the broadcast, and someone had posted a little while ago or retweeted. They wondered why the big corporate stores were open and not killing people, and all the mom and pops, if you will, the small businesses are down. Maybe the big Corona Crisis Corps know there is no task, folks. There's no killing. Why would you expect there to be killing if there's nothing going on in that venue, if it's all been a hype? And I've been saying this for months. What we're seeing is whom is willing to take you out as a people, not serve you as a representative, not serve you in the benefit of a government that's operated correctly, and all of this stuff is rising to the top, and you could skim it clear, but you won't. First of all, I want to point out before I move too farther, because it keeps hitting me in the head, I think about this stuff, it's in my brain, protesting will not stop the inside infrastructure that's allowing them to take you down right now and keep you there. And so just because you even do the surface thing, it's not going to get rid of the cancer that sits inside that system. And so we can believe otherwise, but we can complain, and but it's not going to change inside that. This thing, as I said, was done. This thing was over. The flu season was over. I'm going I'm to be wondering how they're, how they're going to, what are they going to pull from the numbers now because now the, the seasonal flu is over. But they intend to continue to tell you what's going to happen and keep you in that fear trauma mode that I've been telling you was coming way back in December. They're going to continue what they started in 9-11. They're going to continue to press this thing until... Till you succumb, or you throw them all out. You throw the bums out. Throwing the bums out would be the start. What those bums have done over decades has to be fixed as well. You're not going to fix that by just complaining on the steps. Now, throwing the bums out, we have different, different remedies. I told you, Virginia, the Constitution gives us a nice two to three section example of what the colonies understood the people could do when their government failed them. I'm almost inspired by it. What I'm not inspired by is all the hesitation or lack of action taken and, and engaged and moved forward. And when I say move forward, I hear, you know, Virginia was the so-called Second Amendment condition. Fell, fell flat on its face. But it's the model. Not the model of the flat on the face. It's how to, if we could have done it, we have it to do right. And what I've been advocating all this time because of the condition that we're in, which people may or may not appreciate or may do any kind of euphemism around, was this military state that I think sits right here, the Western Spaghetti Western False Front that's been established for you since long before all of y'all that would be listening to, to, you, to me. Established and put in place and running that you can't tell that it sits there, which is a military control. The proclamation of the end of the Civil War or the failure of a, the peace of, a, a treaty of peace of which says the Civil War continues. That's another war against you. And the point about that is it's not succumb to it, to understand it, and then you can get around it. 
because what was supposed to happen and doesn't is what the posterity gets to step up. Those of you that have an inheritance that you want to keep and a peace you want to keep, a republic you want to keep different than the whole world, that's what's required of you because there's been an invasion. If you don't, you don't see it, but any invade, if you intend to maintain your way of life to any invader, you'll have to defend against it. Not only does the recent one come invisible, a shadow. And again, I don't think people truly appreciate when I say there is no test what that really means. And I see it all the time. It's amazing. I see the hesitation. I see the false stepping. I see the the pandering that goes on relative to this, even with people that I'm helping trying to move something forward, as I guess I was challenged last week after the broadcast, what do you do? Yes, I'm doing things, folks. Told you this is a war. You can't let your intelligence out in the broadcast. I only tell you a little bit. And I hope beyond hope some people pick up what I'm saying and you do something where you can, even if you don't know if it's possible. But anyway. There's a war on, and it has multiple dimensions, and it has different, actually different styles of uh, invaders. They're all domestic enemies. One that happened in the 53 actually took foreign law, domesticated it, and that's what you live under, which is whether you know that or not. I've been writing about this stuff since it, before 2000. I called this the current Middle Ages at the time. Now it's called neo-feudalism. I don't think I, I've been too wrong on all this stuff. And yet I have very few people that really embrace what I'm saying. I mean, to the point where you stop complaining, stop excusing what's not going on, and start to at least try to do something. And I guess that's my irritation. I don't see enough of that. Because we're in, a, we're in the time of action, whether people want to appreciate. And again, in a war, there is no excuse to an invader. But they're, they're telling you how long this is going to be going on. Uh, some of you are, are in, the, in the know of this. This is old news. It's not even news. This is what I see people making news out of non-news stuff that's been before us for, for months and months. It's now all of a sudden a new awareness on the Internet. It's really fascinating. They're telling you how far they're going to go, and they're explaining exactly where the authorities, uh, the, the, authority, the, the fraud is going and what they're relying on in this title, the fear of coronavirus and flu colliding in the fall now, if you uh, if you haven't learned listen behind the woodshed and you haven't learned don't know how to parse that out and understand what they're telling you and what they're admitting in that title alone i don't know really what to say the fear of coronavirus what did the cdc say coronavirus was the common cold so what they're saying is the common cold and the flu will be colliding this fall Folks, do you think you think that doesn't happen seasonal? Aren't they, aren't they saying the common cold and the seasonal flu is going to collide this fall? But they're bringing it underneath the COVID-19. Why a whole bunch of people haven't outed this problem, I don't know. I really don't understand it. Why you even talk? I told you last week. I, 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 in fact, I had a whole lot of more COVID stuff. I just started di just dumping it. I just started dumping because I'm not here to talk about this nonsense, this fraud that everyone engages. I'm here to talk about utilizing it to get back what we, what they stole. And to tell you the truth, I have trouble. I, it's almost a joke for me. I absolutely see zero reflection of anything going on relative to COVID around where, what I do, who I'm, who I talk with. Is like it's not even out there. If I was to look at the news, I would think everyone's a jo is joking. It's not out there, folks. Can't see any evidence of it. So I don't know what the heck this is going on. But they're telling you that they're going to push this thing till fall. They're going to—they're telling you they want their vaccines. They're telling you all kinds of stories. And there's complaint and protest about it, but there's not action. There's not the kind of information I'm telling you. You need to go and tell the seats of decision right now to put them on the put them on the razor. They, they're going to be sliced by that razor or else they're going to realize it's sharp, let's get off of it, and we're going to make a decision based on reality. Not a shadow. Not something we can't test. And you should learn to speak a little bit more legalistic, for those of you that are terrified of that word, more lawfully in remedy, and that would be underneath the police power you all agree to, whether or not you agree to the, the government, you, you are placed underneath the servitude of police power, but they don't have it. 
There is no test. There's no de demonstrable exigence. There's no thing they can demonstrate. That's what makes the difference and distinction in a republic. They have The government is not presumed correct. It may be presumed sovereign, but it's not correct. It has to show something, even in its police power. And if you, understood, if you really understood these basic hierarchies and put those in a bullet point list, you would have your authority to challenge any official that's doing anything underneath this. I'm watching and hearing people uh, really get hurt. People are dying now. It's because it's COVID-related. That's them, folks. That, they're, these thems are COVID-related. The stupidity I hear coming out of Trump's mouth, all the so-called advisors around him, all the people that accept it, all the people that fight him, are all bought into the system. They're bought into the scam. You give it, a, I've heard, plandemic, scamdemic. Go ahead and give it all the names. This is a route of your way of life. Why do corporations who don't prove that they don't kill people when they amass a whole bunch of numbers to go buy buy material? Or why are they running in the small a small business? Maybe you should really look at that. How stupid is small business? To me, it's rhetorical questions. They're stupid. They're stupid because they want to be uninformed, or they agree. They agree that they're not willing, they're not worthy of what we have available to protect. So fear of coronavirus and flu collide. You think, folks? You think? I mean, last last night, I someone did respond to one of my tweets. I responded back with a just a, a look. It was part. It's a joke, folks. Wait till they claim a surge of flu-like symptoms will coincide again with flu season. Oh, wait. You think, folks, this is predictable. They've come right out to try and tell you they aren't letting up. And as long as you keep cr being crickets, they're going to continue to press this agenda. This is the same mode and same method of climate change, what they did with Greta, what they do with sustainability, what they do with all that nonsense. What they actually do with your laws, how they deal with you, how they get rid of you, how they marginalize you. How the system doesn't prosecute what it should. It makes stuff up as it goes. It tries to stay relevant, uh, at least relevant within your perception, instead of to, so it doesn't out itself for what its real position is. And so what, what do we get? We, we get Lysol begs customers not to drink its cleaning products. If this doesn't go, if a bunch of uh, men and women haven't seen the stupidity of this, and can use every bit of this to show how far off the track people in, in decision, seats of decision that are representing you have gone off the track and need to be fixed. Rick at Beckkisser, Bench Kisser, is that what it is? <laughs> Grimner, help me. <laughs> British company behind the cleaning product brands Lysol and Detol, Detol would have never known that Britain owned Lysol. Not that it's a product I use, but interesting how in the last 30 years, uh, how corporations have been altered and bought up and changed and monopolized and sustainableized and all this other stuff. is urging customers, or Lysol's urging customers, not to consume its cleaning supplies after United States President Donald Trump suggested scientists should try to inject COVID patients with disinfectants. This is even a wrong story. If you read on, you find out the question, the, the President Trump was asking the question, now, I wouldn't have asked that qu those questions. I wouldn't have made maybe they could do that. I wouldn't have said that. That's got to be the dumbest thing I've ever seen, what, probably the dumbest thing lately I've heard him say. Maybe the scientists should check into that. Now, the problem is he's sitting, floundering, and that's the best he could come up with. Shouldn't be okay with you. Like I say, you're going to have to take it local. You're going to have to show what I've been delineating for you is a fraud, it's not an the fraud cannot be demonstrated even to exist so that there's no demonstrable cause and that demonstrable cause is the only thing the government has power to shut you down on. But no, Lysol has to beg customers not to do what's what the president suggested in a side question. He didn't assert it. So we have MSM doing its thing again. And then this story comes along, it becomes an issue. No poison control calls. No. Poison control calls aren't suddenly spiking after Trump's disinfectant comments. Well, thank goodness, although my thought turned to, to the reason may be we're living in a gener Tide Pod generation, aren't we? Why would they call poison control? I think we're actually finding this Tide Pod generation 
they're a different animal now. They, they actually can eat this stuff and it doesn't hurt them. Maybe that's a angle we're missing about what the government's done to epigenetically change our offspring. So despite the fact people didn't go jugging, uh, gulp, gulping down Lysol, or what I think is going on, those that were, they're a different creature. They don't be affected by it. But this is the stupidity that's in this, this whole condition called COVID. And then we get this story. Yeah, Frumpy, I said he didn't suggest it. He asked a question, and it's been promoted by MSM that it was like assertion. The point is that even coming up with that kind of thing was unnecessary. When he had out an option, though he could have just declared what it actually was, how it was, or said this, because this is what the, hit the news right after, something I've told you behind the woodshed. Where did I learn it? I learned it from what China was doing, looking at their buses, when they said they could disinfect a whole bus with these things. U.S. Homeland Security Biolab finds COVID-19 killed in seconds by sunlight. Humidity. Folks, why do they want to keep you inside during springtime sun? Why? I've suggested to you that UV would would do it. Uh, we've suggested behind the woodshed uh, these nutritional, having nutritional, what, what a disinfectant, cap, uh, vitamin C can be considered a disinfectant. It gets rid of the infection. Is that what Trump was asking? I doubt it. But he's not so stating that something that might be there, that if you look around, the FBI is going after hospitals for for medical professionals giving vitamin C. Now, I've told you, when it stops making sense, stop trying to make sense of it. Go find the cause and eliminate it. And when I say that, again, instead of bloodshed, bring them behind the woodshed, folks. There's a way to do this first in a peaceful action with the threat that the people can bring out the Second Amendment. It's standing right there. So we don't go to the bloodshed first. We bring them behind the woodshed. Anyway, so the Homeland Security now has the answer. I told you use these statements as a guidance for what is known by the government to eliminate its power over you if, even if, they have a remaining chance to hold on to the to the position that symptoms is anything. Flu-like symptoms are going to meet next flu season, folks. Remember that. The who, not the rock, the poop, or the owl, is warning and condemning you all in the future to the flu again. The very thing that they're utilizing to uncover for this ghost is coronavirus bogus. There is no test. At this point, there is no way for anyone to claim a thing. Anything. Zero. And I, okay, well, they, do, they take it to everyone says it's confused. They take a test. It's a swab test. It's a hybrid DNA RNA test to exi- that shows the existence of, of an immune response. That's all it does. And, and there's no source. It could be from anything. Anything that your body responds to, uh, your body you will send a positive. At any rate, moving on. I mean, this stuff is really, no, I'm irritated at just looking at this stuff. Uh, the data is in. Stop the panic and end the total isolation. Now, I don't necessarily agree with all the stories. I would agree with this one. We shouldn't have ever entered into a panic. Trump was very, very uh, in the right position to say this is a, a bad flu season, folks. We know that. We've known that since October because and last year was worse. And so you're going to have to deal with a bad flu year. Would have eliminated all of this. No, instead, they've allowed this thing to become something. Uh, the tragedy of the COVID pandemic appears to be entering the containment phase. Well, first of all, there's no pandemic. It's as pandemic. And if you haven't listened behind the woodshed and find out what the distinction is and how simple they can destroy uh, the reality, how they can get past your perception if you're not clear about what the meaning of two letters in the alphabet put together are relative to a subject matter, they you have to understand how easy you are to, to un- mis- be able to be led by the nose. The COVID as pandemic appears to be that the COVID is flu-like symptoms have been determined and characterizes the word as pandemic. Tens of thousands of Americans have died and Americans are now desperate uh, for sensible raw policymakers who have the courage to ignore the panic and rely on facts. 
folks? Is that what you want, policymakers? This is the whole problem. All you have is a bunch of administrators making these decisions, and they've done it presumptively. No proof, no way, no due process, whatever. So this article I don't even agree with, but the data is in. Stop panic and in this total isolation. I'm using this. If you don't listen to me, maybe you listen to this Dr. Scott. Maybe this doctor will, will make your mind change a bit. What, what data, though? Data for what? What was the test? Okay, so the, the, these stories are useless. They're, as I was saying on another Twitter, the, the, or the same other Twitter I'd, I referred to before, the, the, the statement that's in, in one of the documents of the CDC alone, which was caught by one of the listeners here and, and why I know about it, no, actually, I tweeted uh, tweeted out, but the highlight, what I found interesting is the, the, the viewer, the listener, the follower, actually found the passage that makes the whole thing meaningless and highlighted it and put it back to me, which is great. This is under meeting presumptive laboratory evidence. Three of those words prove the, the sentence is, is meaningless. Meeting presumptive laboratory evidence. Three of those words prove that sentence. The, the total result that you hear on the CDC is meaningless. I guess I could work it out for you, but I want you to think. How is the ter the words in, in a series, meeting presumptive laboratory evidence, mean that w what the result of that report is meaningless to you? should be pretty simple. And that's all the information that the CDC is getting you. should show you there's no demonstrable exigence subject that we are seeing people just lives destroyed and you continue to complain from your keyboards locked out of places and not advocating back there's no test there's no actual cause there's no authority for what you do no on the other hand private business has the right to shut down if they want i'm talking relative to government imposition now if you we need some more list of things uh, i partial I'm, I'm not so I don't like long lists of things anymore, although you need them in your in your support system. I've got a link for you if you go to the blogcaster this week, facts about COVID-19. Don't forget that every time you see COVID-19, replace it with flu-like symptoms to start with. And anyway, that's available to you. Now, CDC, here's a statement from, uh, uh, I think it was 2018. I hope I have this right. I don't see it on my uh, on my um, my page here. A CDC, 80,000 people died of flu last winter in the U.S. And this is a story from 2018. I told you back in December, um, the, in, I told you, I think it was in 1st uh, of January, late December, 1st of January, that Decem in December 3rd, they reported in Philadelphia that this was, this flu, this flu season was the worst in a decade. And they were coming off of that. 80,000 people died last, of last year of flu. All right. That's influenza, not coronavirus. And so this is all Trump had to do was explain to people we're coming into a worse flu year than we had the year before. Be ready, folks. And here's some things you might consider doing so that we don't spread this thing too fast. They could have offered keep your distance. Social did They made a term of it. But see, the term that they use is an agenda. They could have just said, Keep your distance from people instead of trying to make it a term of promotion and a term of agenda. Uh, they could have said, uh, make sure that your hygiene's up. Get your vitamins going. Uh, Trump could have said then, make sure that your health is up. We advise you to do vitamin C, have your vitamin D, try to get as much sun as possible. They could have just said this right up front. And because he didn't, I'm telling you, they're all in on this thing. I don't know. I pause. I don't know what more to say here, folks. You have to take this stuff and use it, or else they're going to destroy you. They're going to destroy you in pieces and parts if you're not destroyed outright. They'll make it, they make it very difficult for you. And you have all the power in your brain and in your mind and in your intention and in your action to stop this. Uh, Ron Paul asks, is this the land of the free or the uh, home of the brave? Well, a long time ago, like I said, prior to 2000, I think I wrote down this is a land of the fee, fee, F-E-E, -E, home of the slave. All this stuff is not news to me. It's not even cute. It's not even interesting. Why is this being asked as a question? Land of the free, question. Home of the brave, question. And the story here is, during a bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden, back in 1973, four bank, employee, bank employees 
were held hostage for six days at the bank vault. A curious bond appeared to help between the hostages and their captors, which later came out to be called Stockholm Syn Syndrome. Isn't this interesting, folks? This keeps coming up. I'm not the only one that references this, but this I reference it. And so Ron Paul does again. It's a Stockholm Syndrome, a condition in which the hostages develop a psychological alliance with their captors during captivity. You're in captivity perpetually right now, folks. So don't think you can just outthink it. By not moving against it, you are impliedly allowing it. And so don't think you can just complain and then, and because you're awake, you've done anything. That's nothing. Because you go to a steps of a, of a building, that's enough. That's nothing. Stockholm Syndrome. Don't you think it's interesting, too, that Sweden is one of the places that didn't follow suit and isn't feeling the brunt of what was going on? In fact, I went to give you uh, someone who's there who did a report a few weeks ago, who did a report here recently on what's going on to let it out. But the website I went back to, I read it once, but I went back again, and they've apparently put it behind a subscription wall. So you're not going to get that link. But someone there has stated that this thing is not fallen apart because they didn't have all their small, destroy their economy, have all their small businesses go, do, uh, go down. They're not paying their employees or this government. They're not putting everybody on pseudo-UBI, universal basic income. They're not paying off your inheritance for a $1,200 check that's made out of fiat. But you will, uh, Stockholm is a condition that you, you hostages, you inmates, these coronavirus inmates have developed a psychological alliance. And this comes back in the news and Ron Paul's talking about it and I find it interesting he'll say it and nobody will respond to this. Oh, we support Ron Paul, but they won't step up for themselves. Now, I, mean, I see this stuff on COVID. My eyes want to just stop reading because it is a, again, just COVID-19 is a set of flu-like symptoms. That's it. That's the end of that story, period. You're coming out of flu-like season, flu-like symptom season. They're now telling you we're going to have to now wait, but fall, the boogie monster's coming back, and you're going to be, oh, we're going to come back. Well, you're not going to you're going to say you're not going to care, but you're not going to stop the nonsense while you have the chance here now. So here's another thing that popped up. was found it very interesting because I've been telling you about the Department of Justice it's, should have stepped up. It's not like they don't know about this condition because we told it to them in 2013 in our lawsuit uh, that the states, the federal government, DOJ should have stepped up and went after all these leaders, uh, the so-called leaders, these uh, governors and things, and all these people that are destroying your life without cause. They shouldn't have underwritten the COVID as a cause. They should have explained that there is no test for it, so we don't know. So anybody acting underneath the color of that is really committing treason, felonies, all this, and prosecute. Well, it comes out in the news now. Uh, DOJ may side with citizens who sue states over onerous coronavirus restrictions. Folks, I asked this question. Because I had said that, they would come out and do that. So does Barr listen, and much as my tweet out about this, so does Barr listen behind a woodshed to the thing I've said the administration should be doing? I answer my own question. No. I ask, why? Because it wouldn't be May that Barr wouldn't wait for some citizen to demand remedy from a demonstrable treason if this were justice and not political poppycock. And so you can point this out to some of you. And there's enough of us that little groups of us could be acting. And the little groups I'm talking could be hundreds relative to our population size. So here I answer my own question, what the administration should be doing, and that when they came out to do what they claim to make it look good like they're doing something, they fall way short of their obligations and duties. And if they defer to the citizen, then I think that's an indication too. I'm not saying you go to the courts. I'm saying you take it on the constitutional power of the posterity like we saw in Virginia. You don't need this guy, and you don't need to go through the courts that are nonetheless closed. Your civil government is closed. Does Folks, if you haven't paid attention to all this and what it means, I guess it doesn't really mean anything to anybody, but here's the point. It is. It's important. It's how they're taking you down because this bar should have not been part of the bar, and I suppose he would be doing law, not legal, and he would be going progress uh, 
proactively, I can use their word, to arrest these infringements upon you? Do you think that your rights, your civil, even your civil rights of the extortion is being violated where they have no reason to steal? Uh-oh, did I just mention that you can't get away out of this prison by sitting around and letting them to continue under the color of authority? California bans gatherings on state properties after protests surge against Newsom stay-at-home orders. Well, the orders, are you, are, you, are you part of the military folks and don't know it? These orders, are you part of the government employee that you have to suffer these orders? Now, if, if you have the right to assemble, do you think Barr has to wait for a citizen to arrest Newsom for, for violating that? Especially here, remember, there's no cause for it all. There's no authority, power underneath the support foundation for this. Don't ever forget, you, or everybody who thinks that you're actually seeing something that the government's acting by, it's worse because there's zero that they're a foundation they're working from. It's worse. I look and see this whole thing, the society is worse than what people think because you're not, not saying a dang thing against this. But this story was very important. Not only are we not getting Barr to come after this as a violating your right to gather, in particular where symptoms is nothing and there is no test otherwise, uh, if you look very carefully here that the California bans gatherings on state properties. If they can only ban gatherings on state properties, you think that's indicating that's the limit of their authority to determine for state property? what that can be happen and their power doesn't go on to things that are public in the regard like roads or private in the regards of your home. In other words, they have no actual control over keeping you in your home. If they've just now indicated all they can do is try to ban you from a public state public place. Does anybody work any of this stuff through? If I give any credit to the authority to ban, he only banned people off the state property. That's the limit of their authority when you look around. It's the same thing for county codes. These building codes, if you look very carefully, you research far enough, you find out the codes are only applicable to county property. Whether that's a possession or whether that's an interest by lease. So here's the, you got all the evidence is right here for everyone to act. And yes, it's inspiring to watch people be belligerent like they're supposed to be run out to the beach and and, have, and start getting sun. Yes, but the threat from the government's still there, and I'm still saying you need to take all those crowds and move them back into the government and walk them into the building and say, like I said before, you don't have a cause. The CDC agrees to it. The FDA agrees to it. Uh, now, what's your real authority before we th give you have one opportunity to tell us what your actual authority is uh, before we throw you in jail? Okay, remember the omission to do something is actionable too, so Barr's on the hook on this if that's what he wants to do. He wants to say a citizen can do this, and then he won't. And you can show that the, he had the duty to make sure that, especially the Attorney General of every state, to make sure that fraud wasn't being perpetrated upon the people. When you see that it is, maybe that's not your government and you have the power of the posterity to step in. Why aren't you? What is a sign, signboard on the, on the steps of a capital going to do? I don't know. Maybe you can uh, mark on the beast at uh, protonmail.com, explain the power of standing on the a, on a, on a, on a steps of a signboard without doing more. I'll remind you, I've done that for many years. And it has a little bit of effect, but not what we need here and now for this. Okay, something else that happened out of California, which uh, I don't understand. I said uh, no bloodshed here. Instead of bloodshed, bring them behind the woodshed. But we get the ref reference at the same time. A judge in California law requiring background checks to purchase ammo violates the Second Amendment. Very important statement. Okay, but it's not what we need. It shouldn't have even been a question. And the problem I have with this report is this that voters, so-called voters, these are federal citizens in voting, franchised federal citizens, voted to get rid of the Second Amendment by, interp by infringing the right to get ammo, which is a part of the right to bear arms, and that was allowed to impose itself on people. 
My problem with this is it took a federal, foreign federal judge to look over foreign federal citizens' attempt to overthrow a, a constitutional prohibition against that government or its franchisees. It actually went into effect. It wasn't stopped in the first instance. should be a very much concern to people. The voters approved toughening California firearms laws to include background checks on ammo purchases in 2016, and the restrictions took effect last J July. United States Judge R Roger Benitez called the law onerous and convoluted and constitutionally defective. They ought to have said this before it went into force and effect. This is my problem right now that we don't have, a, people haven't stepped up to make a law that says when a, before a law can be effective, it has to go through judicial scrutiny. That's still not going to be a protection in front, in front of a, an ignorant population of populace, but at least we got one check to look at it. The judge says, the experiment has been tried. Do you see anywhere in the Second Amendment or the law in the state allowing to the right to keep and bear arms? Does it say that they can experiment with that? That first sentence is almost a crusher relative to a constitutional or public informed government, that it even went to the point that a judge would look at it as an experiment and that it got to the point it could be. Should be your first concern in this case, and not look to the fact, everyone will say, oh great, good, fantastic, no registration for ammo there. That is the improper point. They've got you off the wrong point, and you're not going to go after the real point, because now you think you're just, you've been protected. The casualties have been counted. There should be, there ought, there would have, there's no way under the constitutional form of government respecting a prohibition against government action or the action of its franchisees, franchisees or agents. There should have never been casualties. Now, are you understanding this experiment was allowed to be tried and now we see casualties is no different than the other things they'll do against you and certainly in the medical issue? Let's try out flu-like symptoms on these people. Let's shut down their economy. Let's see if that experiment works. In this case, in that, in this, in that regard, there is no judiciary to stop it. There isn't even a bar in <laughs> the DOJ to stop it. This is the people have to step up. I've been telling you this. California's new ammunition background check law misfires. The guy's being real cute about this, too, this judge. I, I think I commend him at one level, but I condemn him as well. California, he says, California new ammunition background check law misfires, and the Second Amendment rights of citizens, California citizens have been gravely injured. Gravely injured. There should have been no touching of this thing. And we're looking at a federal judge saying that there has been casualties and injuries and an experiment produced upon your republic form representative right that should have been never touched by the government. That should, in, that should, um, you should focus, <laughs> my mind just goes into almost static mode, how clear this should have been that people will not focus on it. You need to focus on what they are saying here, not on the fact that the registration was found to be unlawful. All right, all you guys that are in Second Amendment, I'm talking to you all. I'm talking to everybody, but those of you that think you know about this, you look past this, you look, oh, good, we have background checks. I can almost hear Grimner saying, yeah, you know, registration is confiscation. Yeah, that's playing in my mind over and over in this, but that's not the point. Of course that is, but that's not the point here. A state was allowed, fed, allowed federal franchisees. You see, California citizens here are state franchisee voters. Agents of the federal government went to the federal court, and the federal court says you overstepped your bounds. Should have never hit the courts. Well, maybe we say, okay, thankful for the courts now, I suppose. I guess we get to, we get to bow in reverence to them for all you lo folks in the lords of the uh, coronavirus bogus church. But here, okay, so this is another thing. While this coronavirus thing is going on, we have a court case. Uh, you see that there had to be a challenge. Uh, the the thing I'm dis disliking about this it has to do with your ammunition at a time when there's strife coming in. And I keep suggesting to you strongly, in a military consequence, don't go to guns, at least not first. 
understand the dynamic that's failed and fix that part. What needs to be fixed here is that these kinds of laws cannot go into effect until they've had the, the scrutiny uh, to final determination by a judiciary that can now suffer the scrutiny of the populace if they're interested. All right, I don't know. I just, what do I say? While America is in lockdown, new bill proposes strictest federal gun control measures ever at the same time. And so you, there's a there's a charge going underneath the cover of this as well, the domestic invasion against your rights. Understand, if you understand what happened in the experiment that was failed and stopped by a judge who happened to be a, a Republican uh, uh, Bush appoint, appointed judge, that should never enter into it either. That should be a real problem for y'all. But anyway, that's I'm just pointing this stuff out for someone who might care. While this is going on, these, these laws are going in, and we already know now, we have evidence, the government will put in put into place, and in effect, laws that are ex, not experiments and not constitutional. And other things that we hear from that judge trying to be cute about the misfire of a Second Amendment. Right, remember, this California citizens don't have a Second Amendment first. They're supposed to have California citizens, state citizens, if we go there without getting too convoluted for everybody to want to go, oh, no, if you take the status, was not supposed to be looking at the Second Amendment, that's a 14th Amendment, through the 14th Amendment purview, because a state's rights go through a constitution of each union state. And so we look very carefully at what's being said here and by whom, and understand you're all in threat. Uh, you're all threatened by this. So while you can send around a whole bunch of stuff about how much rights you have, I'm telling you that court case saying that that was an experiment that was executed and casualties were happened is your actual problem. That needs to stop. You need to be a lot faster on the draw and a quicker on the trigger when this kind of stuff happens and that's what you go after, not the registration, that it even made it to the to be considered now you have the evidence that when an experiment happens, accidents will happen because you're not dealing with people in government that are reasonable. Stop trying to make reason. What they tried to, again, this is more back to the crisis, not going to waste. You have saboteurs in the government that we've allowed in there. We have a system of infrastructure and policy and laws. Policy, remember that before the, before in the other discussion, they're making policy makers are making all this up. It shouldn't be policy makers. But we have policies being driven. Those are telling you it's not local. And we have this idiot also coming on the, uh, uh, in the scene to, if nothing more, use the, use the, the attempt to promote. Now we heard this a while back. This is written through technocracy. Biden, pandemic, an opportunity to enact green new policies, new deal policies. So they, these people know what they're doing. They're on plan. They know what's happening. I hear, you know, I keep saying plan. I keep seeing the, the word pandemic keep coming. I was going to use that. I thought that was pretty novel, but then I realized it's already been kind of beat to death a long time ago. So I didn't really want to go down that path. I want to focus more on trying to make being cute, but making it a condition. The plan is not a pandemic because that was already known. It's the continuum of the foreign invasion that's going on. The plan that you're supposed to be focused on is not something tied to a ghost. And you shouldn't perpetually discuss it because while you're discussing it, their plan, the real one, the one that I've told you long ago is our pr real problem, is working. So I don't like to trivialize, but I've been avoiding trivializing this thing with, with names. Yeah, okay, I threw out one coronavirus bogus, but it has bogus on it because that's the thing. You need to focus on this thing is bogus. Stop fueling it. Start to find those that use it and attack them properly. Again, no bloodshed. Behind the woodshed is what you bring them. You bring the facts and you shut them down. You don't allow it to go. You become a voice, an example of how that's going to be, and you bring more people in that way. So Biden is all totally going to use this uh, pandemic. It's really as pandemic, not real pandemic. 
It's only flu-like symptoms that's going to collide with next year's flu season. Now, that's not surprising, is it? An opportunity to enact Green New Deal policies. Now, Technocracy News from Patrick Wood is about the technocratic imposition that the Green New Deal is about, that we've talked about behind the woodshed. I won't say any more. Uh, Patrick Wood does a fine job. Uh, my only contention is I the way, how I would characterize its purpose, what it's for in this continuum of, of invasion that's going on. So remember, this is a, we went back from the strictest gun bill to a guy who told you you get to have a, a shotgun. He would agree to that. Did he have the right to limit that, folks? Did he have a right to have an opinion on what that limitation was? No, but we all, we give him a little bit of heck about it, but we don't really shut it down. Anybody who has these ideas that cannot support their position underneath the constraint of a constitution needs to be outed for that and focused on that. And anybody who tries to aid and abet that evasion of the constitution needs to be outed for that. And you keep, you keep marginalizing them based in the objective basis, not in your opinion about it, not in your discussion of the effects of, of, of the harm. That's, a, again, a no duh kind of thing. No, no kidding. There's going to be harm. When you do experiments, there's going to be harm. I mean, if you go to, you want to talk about harm, you talk about failure, go talk about Thomas Edison. We want to get into the politics of it. Let's go look at that guy experimenting. And on the other hand, experimenting is all us little monkeys can do to understand the world we're in. But we're not talking about all that. We're talking about people that have a say in your life and have had a say. And they're telling you exactly what the end game is. And in this, I'll just read, I'll just read it uh, the, from the beginning of the Great Panic of 2020. What TN was, has warned that the tight connection and common and end game uh, to climate alarmism. Biden reinforces this by calling it the opportunity to enact Green New Deal, and this is the heart of the matter, not saving lives. That's right, but the Green New Deal is not just about climate. It's about everything you're watching happen through, whether it's your 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 uh, trade, uh, your $1,200 trade for your inheritance t money, uh, fiat, or whether it's the forcing of UBI by the government subsidizing your employees, where it's destroying the, the small business, it's, in, it's engaging with sustainable corporations on corporate governance, this, the, the, the fiscal destruction, the theft within the marketplace, so the so-called marketplace, the talking about a scam, the Wall Street, the bank uh, influx, which is you're now seeing, all this is the Green New Deal. It's not just about climate. It's about putting pressure in places to get you to the outcome, which happens to be sustainable debt, and not just in money, in your entire life. And within that was also what? Your, your universal basic income. You have universal basic health. Those are the death panels. Sure, sure enough, that story pops up from Kurt Nimmo. Death panel Ezekiel, no choice but mass poverty and death. A freeze-frame economy will ultimately kill thousands. Right? That's another part of that agenda that everyone just pops out with, and then they focus on Bill Gates for talking about it and promote it. Why is that an issue? Of course they're going to promote it. The point is, what are you doing to stop that? Because it's it's on its way, folks. They're not stopping this thing. You're understanding that it's whether it's a let me look at this a plan, scam, hoax, demic, whatever, you, Grimner. Thank you, but. Global militarized state. Yeah, folks, I mean, yes. What are you doing to stop that? Is not stopped by sending tweets about the, look at where, how stupid this thing, how, how it doesn't make sense here and how it doesn't make sense there. It's not supposed to make sense. You're dealing with a bunch of insane people imposing a foreign way of life on you. Of course it's not going to make sense. Death panel Ezekiel, no choice. Uh, it, in se if, if several weeks of state-imposed house arrest and unemployment have maxed out your stress level, wait until you hear about the experts have in mind to mitigate a bad seasonal influenza. Here is Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, brother of Rom. Isn't that the same guy that said never let a good crisis go to waste? A former mayor of Chicago and Clintonite. Realistically, COVID will be here for the next 18 months or more. 
we will not be able to return to normalcy until we find a vaccine or effective medications, he said. I know that's dreadful news to hear. How are people supposed to find work if, it's, if, he, if this goes on in some form uh, for a year and a half? Is all the economic pain worth trying to stop COVID-19? The truth is we have no choice. You can believe him, or you could say they have nothing to base they found what their opinions are on, and they don't have the authority to stop you. And if they try to stop you, then we go back to what I've said before. You find your statutes for extortion and coercion. They're both felonies. The commission of which is felonies. The omission to do what ought to have been done is also another side of the felonies. Why that is so hard to understand, to go to black and white, Read the sentence that says that, copy and paste that in, plug in what they're doing, is fulfilling the, the form of the law that con continues, that uh, qualifies the proper cause and uh, probable cause to believe that there's a crime going on. Why that's so hard to do and understand, I don't, un I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. And then as I think about it, I get a quandary. Last week I kind of got both sides. One is I'm talking beyond or down to people. The other side was saying I'm simplifying information. And that's where I sit, right between the two. I guess I'm doing my job. I'm trying to talk to whoever I can. If some of you find that it's uh, uh, simple, fantastic, take it and run. The point is that some people find it simple that I'm, I'm sure there's an interest to go use it. And I'm not talking, I can't talk down to some condition there's just the condition exists i speak to that we either acknowledge it and want to do something about it or we don't i don't know what more to do about that i'm here talking about a condition i'm not talking to anyone and i hope that the information is simple enough the subject matter can get kind of technical and i'm trying to my best to try and keep it limited when i use a term called like exigent circumstance now you've heard it me say it quite a bit a demonstrable exigence that's not my words. I use it. I, I, I so, um, embrace it because that's a powerful statement. It sounds uh, technical. It sounds like big word. It sounds like it's not understandable. But I'm saying go read and understand about that, and you're going to have it be empowered. Because as soon as you find out what that actually means and what it's tied to, and when you find out the government, no official has it, that should just like be a weight lifted right off of you. And so, anyway, just as I say, the, well, how I present, yeah, we talk about adult, you know, adult things. <laughs> We're insects. Adult things behind the woodshed. We try to bring a principle up. We're in a diminished capacity in this society, as far as I can see. It's not anybody. That's all of us. I don't know how else to, to communicate that. But anyway, so here we have Rahm Emanuel's brother talking about 18 months. Doesn't that kind of kick us in? Let's think about how this is coincidence. It all came at the same time. Doesn't that kick us in into flu season and then the fulfillment of flu season to go 18 more months? These people are planning to hurt you. This guy, I've told you to be careful about these people. You remember Mr. Emanuel. He's the bioethicist in the favor of so-called death panels. He advocated denying medical assistance to old folks who are not participating citizens. Social credit, folks? That is to say, sickly retired elders no longer working and paying f mandatory financial tribute to the state and its corporate owners. This is what's coming in while we focus on how screwed up COVID is and how there's nobody, uh, nothing, no cause and all that. Instead of going after the cause, look right past the smoke screen. It's a stocking horse. I've told you all of this, folks. Participating citizens, right? This is a whole other level of servitude going on. And I've said to be careful about these bioethicists. When it goes from moral to ethics, you're in a licensee's bureaucratic world. They don't have to think like you do. They are li limited liability. In fact, as I think about this, yeah, I was responding a bit like about something that actually might come up here at the end of the broad near the end of the broadcast if I get there. There, when we go to ethics, you're in trouble. That's the bureau rats world. They don't have to think morally like you, and they don't have to be accountable because it's limited liability. Remember, he's also identified as an expert. Your health care becomes centrally controlled by committee. I bet this guy was uh, as an advisor to New York saying, we aren't going to resuscitate you if you have a 
the cardiac or, 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 or pulmonary arrest. Do I say that right? Pulmonary? Anyway, New York issues do not resuscitate guideline for cardiac patients amid coronavirus, amid the common cold. Read it, folks. Understand the, the criminality. This is premeditated murder. In a society that we should have, we, I don't see that we have, have want, actually, for anything. And I've told you that since 2008, that fiscal overthrow proved it to us. Every one of you should have no want in this country at all. And you see it again, $6 trillion out of just out of a signature. How is that, folks? Actually, how is that? And since it is, where is yours, actually? I'm not saying that, I don't even know if I agree with us asking that. I'm saying you have an option here, those of you that are wired in that regard, to pull the bullet points together to show this is crime. But they do, they do not resuscitate guideline. I am, if I understand right, that's got some resistance. However, my point is, it's not outside of government that was supposed to be limited in what it did to do that. This is the experiment, and they don't care that people, there was casualties. I'll just say it by the other case. This is the experiment that should never happen, that these invaders that just look like you and me are testing, are pushing. They're pushing the alternative to get you to start agreeing to a little bit of it. That's why you also can't sit back. You sit back, you let these things become festering examples, the wounds against us. So these agendas are coming underneath this COVID all at the same time. Uh, the, the stalking horse. Some of this stuff is kind of outside of our reach, but I don't think it is ultimately because we do have control locally. And that's a, a little bit more complicated as far as getting affected because we're just not a, we're not integrated society right now. We need to be. We need to stop making the excuses on how we're going to do what we do on what basis we're doing it. We need to really come around quick, understand what that is, and then have confidence in, in that. And I've just told you, you don't, you, you can, you can work by not being wrong once. You sit inside the existing black and white and that defeats anybody else who tries to evade that. The black and white is these guidelines that are before us. It's the only thing we have right now. E even within a military consequence. The Federal Reserve announces massive expansion of international global swap lines. Well, folks, this is a story I had on, I don't know, a while back. I was going to bring this forward because I said, here comes something else. I never got to it. But here it is. It's come back in the in the news this week. This story is the old one. What came in the news this week was liquidity crisis. The Fed is sending billions of emergency dollars to USD-dependent nations. Now, what's interesting about this whole thing, I don't fully understand it, is that the swap lines are abilities to transfer money, uh, uh, trade the U.S. D d dollar for other forms of currency within the system, the cash, the financial structure of the system. It's not for you. But they, they're doing this to, to make, to bolster the confidence of this in the system. All right. So this just, this is all coming in to continue a confidence. Now, a long while back, it was somebody post, I think Gary Long posted a thing that, uh, I think it was, um, the Truth Media put out, markets keep crashing despite Fed taking interest rates to zero. That was prior to this. They then said they were going to open swap lines to other countries that were dependent on the dollar. See, they got to keep the confidence. It's all about your confidence and trust here, folks. As soon as you tell them it's gone, they have nothing they can, it's all done. I don't know what more people, I don't know if people appreciate the clarity with that. No different the clarity that there is no test. When you state there is no trust or confidence, they're certainly done because now you can just say, I don't trust you, I'm not confident in you, and I don't trust you, and therefore the standard of proof for you now is the highest level. We go nowhere until you show. And if you show wrong, that's a crime. And so the, the statement was here, markets keep crashing. Well, this is all to try and keep things afloat and it's really not they're moving this thing from where it is to where it's going to go my response is it doesn't keep crashing it's merely crumple zones giving way during the collision between fiat and the fofo coup i said this back in march 17th 
All right, so this is what you're seeing. This is the confidence of the system being bolstered within the system, the, the fiscal system. And they're, it's now moving in to do that, which means that locally you're, you're going to, I don't know how you're going to see this because it happens kind of slow, but this one might happen faster. Uh, they call it the recession. It's going to drive prices up. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to get, uh, you not have no way at this one. This is why, again, uh, local, local, trading or whatever you want to do that you can build up to start avoiding touching the thing that is the fiat. Uh, it's difficult now because they've got us in an in a, in a ignorant way. That's just what we're going to have this one more thing. That, that If this was an, a, a, a military objective, they've really got us out of shape here. Swap lines, a little known trick that keeps money flowing globally. A swap line is another term for temporary reciprocal currency arrangement between central banks. That means they agree to keep a supply of their country's currency available to trade to another central bank on a going exchange rate. Banks use it for overnight and short-term lending only. Most swap lines are bilateral, which means they are only between two countries' banks. Here's the thing I focused on for me. Overnight and short term is not learn long term fixing, folks. So this is just to keep uh, your instant gratification button fixed within the central bank's ability in every country that's dependent. Dependent countries understand this di this dynamic and research keep it liquid, so called, so that they don't cause these distrust and panics. They don't the, the, this this any of these. If you look through the military through the Libra code, will tell you. You don't want to lose, have the people lose confidence in you. It, that's the killer. That's one of, you don't want to and piss off the natives with that either. So the, uh, what's going on, we're moving in through what they're moving through into. And I've told you all who are in Bitcoin and all this digital currency, be careful. It's not actually decentralized. It's not anonymous. No, now everyone knows it, but no, here it is. And I told you last week about it moving in. The overarching goal behind the digitizing of money has to be central bank digital currencies. And so this is all happening underneath the stocking horse called COVID. Mere flu-like symptoms are threatening it's going to return next flu season. It's no revelation, folks. It's no revelation that central banks are actively engaged in both the research and piling of central bank digital currencies. When I told you that, what, back in when? A year, almost, what, seven, eight years ago? It was a revelation. And so here it is, folks. I've told you this was happening. Why? Because I'm so smart. I'm, I'm a seer. I'm the oracle. No. No, that's the bat broadcast network I came from. No, it's because it's written down in their documents. Like we were looking at the the, the Rockefeller Foundation's documents. It's all written if you just know where to look. If we knew where to look, we would see all this stuff. But the mechanics of how they're conducting their program is not as widely recognized. This is largely because the information is buried within pages of mundane reports, speeches, and discussion papers. Everything I've asked you to go read, because then you'll see it. Then yes, it's mundane, it's dry, it's boring, and they do it like that so you don't. And you haven't. And if you did, you'd be telling me, yeah, I've got that's old news what you say behind the woodshed. But you don't say that, so I know you haven't, and then we don't have the chance to move forward or even have a discussion on maybe even if there's a question, how? And I know that happens because when I work with my colleagues, we do have that discussion. Well, how, how do we do actually move this? We see it. Now, how do we, how do we, uh, how do we best maneuver in this condition? A few headlines might have glossed over the financial press, but the technical aspects are usually not considered. This article goes through that. I won't read any more. The point is they're moving you through a, a condition right now, under the cover, everyone's focused on this COVID, um, and they're running that agenda back through. It's all written down, actually. Like I told you, I've told you about it before. I may not be the, the pseudo-geek expert in any one of these things. I can just tell you, I actually don't need to be. I've told you that before. You just need to know it's a military mission in some form against you. And if you it was actually coming into an invasion in your town and you really understood it, that you probably wouldn't be sitting at your keyboards. That's all I can suggest. In this case, we can sit at our keyboards a bit because we have the ability yet to write stuff down and use the power of the pen, if you will, the pencil to push lead that way first. In fact, I think, as I've been looking at this for decades, folks, the best way to do is make a record that anticipates what the enemy would, uh, propaganda would say against it, 
which defeats, you defeat that with how you progress, and there's nothing they can say against the law, which got me to be, understand when I started to see it, what I tell you about not being wrong once and relying on objective basis. Don't buy into this uh, pr propaganda at all, and don't, re don't, remain, don't remain inactive against it. Uh, that's enough here. They're moving your monetary system. What I wanted to get through today, uh, well, quite a bit as usual, but I ran across a document looking for all this at other things this time, and it's another going to be uh, maybe a refresher, uh, if you will, uh, uh, but tied to a government document, which I thought was interesting. I, as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, I didn't realize they had this new publication, but here's a current day reference I can talk to you all about. Uh, underneath this thing, when you start to see the connection with the military, with all this fantastical stuff that's going on uh, relative to technology and medical or bioweapons or whatever, you can't you can't say that they're not involved. They absolutely have to be involved. If we look at certain guidelines, I've said before, you know you know them when you see them. I can't stress that enough. You don't really have to plan more. If, when you see and understand. Again, in the standard of, of a republic that you must keep, as soon as you find deviation, and in fact the standard is the mere appearance of a deviation, you should be a hornet's nest. You should be on that like like your life depended on it, because it likely does. But here's the um, interesting document from the DOD, and it's their Defense Department, <laughs> a 2015 Defense Department manual is 1200 pages it's amazing uh what we don't know and what they want what, what's going on behind the scenes when you got thousands and millions of people working on stuff department of defense law of war manual let me just just look through this document just for the references to martial law and i did that because i wanted to see how quick if anybody just did the did a cursory review what they might come up with and i was able to pull out pretty quickly as I've told you, the Spaghetti Western, you could not know that there is a military occupation, if they were sharp about it, that the rule of the Western Spaghetti Western would be put in your face to agree to, and there would be no evidence that it wasn't, that you would agree to that as a reality when, in fact, the control was something, something behind it. Let me just touch this document. You'll get a link to it. I got it from other than the DOD website because I didn't want a bunch of people going there. You can go find this if you want to get it right from the DOD. You can do it. I just happened to find it in another place. But let me just go through some of this. Just referring to martial, I guess I better put martial law so I go quicker. The uh, Let me just read. Just, I'm going to drop into the middle, middles of these plays. We talk about uh, sec, uh, footnote 18 on this page, 37. We're going to start. It's the first one that came up for me when I put martial law down. A C. Lieber Code, Article 40. This is a 2015 manual, folks, referring to an 1863 document. C. Lieber Code, Article 50. I've read all this to you, too, but anyway, let's go through this just a little bit. I hope, I hope you listen carefully. You'll see, I hope you see what I, what I, what came to my awareness about this, uh, this, this thing that, that could be right in front of your face and you don't see it. Uh, there exists no law or body of authoritative rules of action between hostile ar armies except that branch of the law of nature and nations, which is called the law and usages of war on land. And I want you got to really put your mind together on this one, folks. You really have to listen. If you, if you can't really focus on what I'm saying, you get this document, maybe use my use what I'm saying to go to those places and read this and reread these passages and read them some more until you can disconnect from your, your own belief, pre presumptions and prejudices and start opening this thing up to what could be possible under it and consider, if you will, to make it maybe easier that a lawyer, such as the guy that wrote the murder memo, is the one interpreting this. In other words, there is no actual limit written that you can div pull out from the existence of the words when you can, when you see no limitation. The br only branch is the law of nature. We go back to the Declaration of Independence. Your mind has to jump back to every reference that you know and try to put a meaning on that as you listen to what they're saying here. And you're going to start to ex hopefully expand the scope of the placement of how this manual 
affecting today, why it can touch back to 1863, and then you start to think about what they're saying there, and do you see evidence that all of that could be today? And I'm hoping when I get through with this part, you're going to start to understand better. In the military manual of 2015, they're talking about the condition that you're looking at right now in this in this country that has been for a long time coming through the thing like a stocking horse of uh, COVID and other things that you've watched. Certainly 9-11. Certainly that one, and I told you this was going to be the 2020, Hind Operation Hindsight 2020 was going to be the furtherance of what they started, the War of Terror. And you're going to have to understand something, too, as I read this. Lots to really understand. When they talk about hostile armies, and they talk about belligerence, you got to really work hard to think about who has, they both have the same rights, but they have them in different contexts at the same time, Right? Consider the United States government has an army. It's foreign. It's hostile to you in the state. There's a civil war that proves that out if you didn't understand what that was telling you as well. So when you read this and you think, oh, it's talking military, some soldier somewhere in some battle, I want you to reconsider that prejudice that you've put in your mind. You are the enemy combatant. Remember, P-A-T-R-I-O-T Act, 2001 says so. You are the belligerent claimant in person for those of you that do enough study in the judicial side, and you have to be. It's another thing that came up. You have to be belligerent. You can't don't be talked out of being belligerent, but there's a way you become belligerent. I've been, and I've tried to explain what that is without jeopardy to every one of you. So I. I, I so I'm trying to talk, I'm talking at you for sure. I'm not talking down to you, and I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm telling you there's a real condition that I don't want to see anybody hurt, but we have something to go fight. We can't stop here, and here I keep finding evidence. Anyway, the Lieber Code, 1863 document referenced in, in, in 2015. Uh, the Pentagon needs to go talk to the attorney that made the murder memo because they threw the, the administration threw the Lieber Code out, remember? for judicial expedience. There exists no law or body of authoritative rules into, of action between hostile armies except the branch of law of nature and nations, which is called the law and usage of war on land. There's another law for the water, but let's keep moving here. The, by the term of law of war, it is intended the branch of international law, which prescribes the rights and obligations of belligerents. Or, more broadly, those principles and usages which, in time of war, define status and relations as not only of enemies, but whether or not in arms, whether or not in arms, but also of persons under military government or martial law and persons simply resident, or, and persons simply resident, or being upon the theater of war, being upon the theater of war. Folks, i got to repeat this. You've got to understand this is meaning where you are now, where it's happening. Whether you actually appreciate that or not, these are the, this is expanding this military thing right to your house. It says simply, persons of simple residence. No, no, no. Okay, so, I mean, there's lots to say. Simple residence are underneath this, and which authorizes their trial and punishment when offenders. Unlike military law proper, the law of war in this country is not a formal written code, but consists mainly of general rules derived from international law, supplemented by acts and orders of the military power, and a few legislative provisions. Do you understand? Do you get, I mean, does it trigger right there that this is enacted by a simple stroke of a pen, and this is in fact the case, and you wouldn't, have to be told. It's general. It is, in general, it is quite independent of ordinary law. On the actual theater of military operations, as is remarked by a learned judge, the ordinary laws of the land are superseded by laws of war. The jurisdiction of the civil magistrate is there suspended, and the military authority and force are substituted. What did Washington state courts do but suspend the civil courts? I did that voluntarily, folks. I told you that was a trigger for your understanding. You don't need to move no more. There was the invasion. You just now lost your civil capacity. This thing exists where the, in the absence of civil law. People should have stepped up and said, we're not going to allow that. We'll have our own courts then. 
you could have done that through the county. Then you're okay, interjection, but I, big, big deal right there in that first paragraph. Finding indeed its original authority in the war powers of Congress and the executive, and thus constitutional in its source, the law of war may, in its exercise, substantially supersede for the, for the time even the Constitution itself, as will be hereinafter indicated, for a time as well. There's your exigence statement. It's for a temporary time. There now, these people that are in the news are extending this war against you indefinitely by stupid causes. Nat causes of, natural causes. They're actually using that law of nature, and they're using it as a cover as well, if you understood what you just read there. Lieber coded Article 90 in this document now states, a traitor under the law of war, a war traitor, not traitor, not trading with the enemy, traitor, is a person in a place or district. You live in a, di where a district, federal district court has jurisdiction, folks? The place or district under martial law who, unauthorized by the military commander, gives information of any kind to the enemy and holds intercourse with him. Have you been given any authority by the military commander when your civil government failed right before your eyes? Martial law, moving on to page 763 of 1200. The military occupation, military government, belligerent occupation, and martial, mar, martial law. And it, it's M-A-R-T-I-A-L, folks. M-A-R-T-I-A-L. All right, get, please, I, even after I said spell it right, people spelled it wrong. At any rate, the practice of conducting military occupation is very old, and the law of military occupation has long been part of the law of war. Military occupation is also called belligerent occupation. The conduct of military occupation has also been characterized as exercise of military government or martial law. And I'm not going to read the footnotes. You... This is really fascinating, but you need to take the time to go read through this yourself. I'll leave those to you to support those uh, in support of those informations in the document for you to read. Let me move down into uh, also then, I guess uh, we're going to pick up inside a footnote uh, 5, military law and precedence. By, quote, by military government is meant the dominion exercised in war by a belligerent power over territory of the enemy invaded and occupied by him and over the inhabitants thereof. Have you been declared of an enemy combatant? Uh, they determine the federal courts have territorial jurisdiction of USDC. You can't get to a DC US court or a, a Article Three court. Do you know that the civil government's not directed ultimately by possibly the uh, the war that never uh, the, the war of northern aggression that never ended? And I would have to ask you, those that you think that the Civil War ended, find me that proclamation or the Treaty of Peace that ended it. I'd actually go for a Treaty of Peace at this point, because at least something would be ended. It wouldn't mean that the people won, but it would at least say that there was something that was concluded. But anyway, it's up to you to define that, because I can't find it. I'm, I'm helpless in my ignorance beyond that to say, if I can't find it, that's good enough. I'm going to have to go down the path that I'm underneath a martial government, whether or not it looks like one. Why? Because to not show you that it is would be the best protection for it. And that's what it's, the, mar the government of martial government is to protect itself. This species of government is des designated in general terms as martial law and thus was confused with or not properly distinguished from martial law proper exerted at home under circumstances of emergency and yet to be considered and yet to be considered when there's no distinction is and there's no difference folks i don't know what there would be to consider if i was to even engage the fact of that statement as being valid to exclude what they do relative to the way this united states of america was designed a district is attacking the states and unions of states. Or did attack. They never finished. 
there are under the Constitution three kinds of military jurisdiction. One is to exercise. One is to be exercised both in peace and war. Another is to be exercised in the time of foreign war without the United States, and or in time of rebellion or in civil war within states or districts occupied by rebels treated as belligerents. And third, to be exercised in time of evasion or insurrection within the limits of the United States or during rebellion within the limits of states, maintaining adhesion to the national government when the public danger requires its exercise. Let me go back again. They identify for you the United States is different than the states. And I'm not talking about the definition of states, which includes Washington District and the territories. I'm saying the un states of the several states of the Union. There's a distinction right here that exposes that. Okay, so we can pretend this doesn't exist or we can understand it. I'm not saying it. I'm saying you put this as a fact and then it make, you start looking underneath international provisions of law and you start to move through and understand nothing is certain, but that you have an objective basis that you can press on. And when the mass of people rise up, it's why it takes the mass as well. This is the secondary reason. The occupier has a problem with the natives. And if they're righteous, then they can't, then it's exposed. And until it's exposed, there's a presumption of innocence, isn't it, that even a criminal enjoys, an actual criminal. Okay, again, I, there's so much to read here. I'm going to go to the next one now, a little further on. I gotta look up after I go to the link. I got to look up through how far I want to read. The first of these uh, may be called the jurisdiction under military law and is found in acts of Congress prescribing rules and articles of war or otherwise providing for the government of a national of national forces. The second may be distinguished as military government superseding as far as may be deemed expedient. Remember I used the word I said executive expediency in when I was describing what happened after 2010 with the murder memo. You see how the words are right here, folks. I'm not using vocabulary to make myself sound, sound intelligent. I'm, I'm actually just kind of parroting things. I guess that sounds like I don't have intelligence. Uh, well, what, what, you make up your decision. You read this stuff and you, you apply what I'm saying and you can tell whether I've got an intelligence working on this or not. But it's not for the sake of sounding, sounding technical or, or super knowledgeable. This is the words that are used. You have to stick to this like glue. Uh, expedient, the local law, the ex uh, and exercised by the military commander under the direction of the president, with express or implied sanction of Congress, while the third may be denominated martial law proper and is called into action by Congress or temporarily when the action of Congress cannot be invited and in the case of justifying or excusing peril by the president in times down uh, in times uh, insurrection or invasion or of civil or foreign wars within districts or localities where ordinary law no longer adequately secures public safety and private rights if you don't have remedy to the courts for your private rights this gets kicked in right there folks so what are you looking at i don't even know what more to say right there if you're threatened by COVID and they did it without foundation, they themselves have caused the problem. This is why I also told you that this doesn't look like a continuity of government condition. They would be stopping it. So there's a different invasion going on. Uh, uh, let's see, Libra Code Article 1 is the first thing we opened up with. I want to read that part even though, uh, well, it'll get there anyway. We're going to get there anyway, it's, even though it is a footnote. Article 1, a place, a district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under martial law of the invading or occupying army. Whether any proclamation declaring, declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has issued or not. I've reported repeated this over and over. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. You know them when you see them is where this comes from right here. The presence of the hostile army proclaims its martial law. 
How can anybody say your civil remedies have been destroyed where there's no court? Can't, uh, where they can't say that you, your civil remedies haven't been destroyed. The civil rights and civil remedies haven't been destroyed when they destroyed the court's access because of what? A shadow. The shadow of a flu symptom. And there's more underneath this. You can do COVID, just one of them. So right here, you just see, I don't know, I hope you see it. I, I read this, hope you see it. I say you see it, I hope you see it. I don't know what more to say. It's right here in front of us that this is what's going on. We have a different problem. COVID is not our problem. That's a ghost. You keep talking about it. You keep saying the effect of it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an invasion. It's a maneuver. It's an operation going on against you. You have to step up and stop this military invasion. It's against residents and inhabitants. The belligerent happens to be the United States. If you want to maintain your posterity position in a union state, they go on to say Article 3. They just read, okay, do I read that? You, we've read all this. I don't even want to read more. Let me just read this one. It's, uh, they're just citing Lieber Code over and over in 2015. Martial law is the host, in, the, in a hostile country consists in the suspension by the, mili by the occupying military authority of the criminal and civil law and of the domestic administration and government in the occupied place or territory and in the substitution of military rule or force for the same, as well as the dictation of general laws, as far as military necessity requires this suspension, substitution, or dictation. Have they suspended your civil courts? Absolutely. Are they underneath a rule that allows them to beat down on you without due process? Absolutely. Does it function of a general law? Absolutely. Did they use force to do it? Absolutely. I don't even know what the question is there anymore. So, again, this is a 2015 military document. Department of Defense Law of War Manual. All right? Inhabitants and residents can be subject without a notice. Should kind of be a problem for you. They go back and repeat, I do these links, they go back and repeat the fact that they don't have to tell you. It's, it's Article 1, the presence of the hostile army. When you got somebody hostile against you without remedy, that's that you know them when you see them, folks. I don't know what else to say. This proclamation declared the city to be under martial law. I guess we got to go up. There is a, There was no hostile demonstration and no disturbance afterwards. No, this is going to be a big long one. I'm read, there was, in, a, in, a, in page 776, I'm going to read from the bottom. There was in this situation that they're talking about a general uh, Butler involved in uh, in a condition. Uh, then I'm going to read it down in the Gulf uh, near New, in New Orleans. Apparently, there was no hostile demonstration, no disturbance afterwards, and we think that the military occupation of the city of New Orleans may be considered as substantially complete from the date of this publication, and that all rights and obligations resulting from such occupation or from the terms of the proclamation may be properly regarded as existing from that time. This proclamation declared the city to be under martial law and announced the principles by which the commanding general would guide in its administration. So you see that they can. People get confused. They have to see it. But in fact, Lieberkos says that doesn't have to happen. And boy, you know, they're not going to tell us now that they've done it. And that's why they decided, I think, I'm sure they decided to do it what they did back in 1868. Don't do a treaty of peace and don't actually end the proclamation, but announce that they have federal agents in every state. Institute, in a few years later, in 1871, the district courts that were not Article Three courts. Where do you find that? United States Code 28. USC sections about 81 to 134 or 5. It's all written for us to see what's really playing out. And I'm saying that if you disregard that, well, you're going to do two things. You're going to really fall short, but then more importantly, you're going to respond improperly. And there's a really, there is that way to respond for as much as people don't like to hear that. I'm looking to see what what else I want to read. It goes uh, page 844, going down to see uh, court case uh, or the book of William E. Ber Berkmer, Military Government and Martial Law. One of the most important incidents of military government in this is the regulation of trade with the subjugated state. The occupying state has an unquestioned right to regulate commerce intercourse with conquered territory. 
it may be absolutely prohibited or permissible to be unrestricted, and such limitations may be imposed thereon as either policy or proper attention to military measures may justify. You see, lawmakers are policy makers. You saw the story, you heard the story to earlier, they go to policy makers. There is no law. Your legislatures make policy. When you see that, folks, what does that mean relative to that last statement? They impose, the military imposes, government imposes policy. Your, your, your government has been told to look like something organic, but it's not. It only makes policy. Now, how you don't see that the rest of this is tied together is really a question in my mind of whether or not you can really think clearly here. And I, again, anybody that has a counterpoint, I, I need to hear it because all the stuff I've looked at for decades points me to one, uh, only one really real thing I have to really concern myself. And here's the, I keep wanting to explain this. That you, you have to understand this. This is not something that you go to arms. You are out positioned in this military occupation. What it does is it explains and informs us how, we're, how we have to move through to prevail against an enemy we find we wake up to and knocking on our doors to ask us whether or not We've been uh, too close to somebody. Regulate commerce and intercourse. What the, in back in the 30s, what the, gov uh, the Supreme Court state relative to commerce? They actually expanded it to affecting commerce. Didn't that put Congress as the regulator of all commerce and beyond actually the constitutional constraint? Qualifies that statement. The conquered territory? Well, we'll see. I'm not so, like I've said, I'm not so sure it's conquered. It looks like it right now, but the, there's still the people that need to rise up. And whether or not the Civil War was the, the end game for that, and that's the future, I don't know yet. I think we can still go the other way. I think we can do, we can do what we need to do as a silent uh, engagement, evolutionary engagement, as I say, and we can bring back some of this stuff. Uh, so when you see these things, the regulation of commerce and intercourse and over the, you see, it looks like it's the constitutional power to regulate commerce. But remember, constitutional regulation wasn't the control. It was to make regular. People have seen that and, and people have stated that, but I don't think people appreciate what they're saying and what that meant. That there was a distinction that to regulate meant, meant to make regular. What we do now is under regulate means control. And this is why you also try, you, I believe you see why most everything is reduced to commerce. In fact, some of the emails this weekend, or actually I got to most, most of the emails, some were about property law and why I admit I had um, stated and exposed again. Remember, it reminded the people, we're talking ad valorem property is what's taxed. That's commerce market value, not grant side. And so you look very carefully, you see this connection over and over, right? What I've just read here relative to this book explaining what the uh, important incidents of military government are. And even so, I say, I think this is what's going on. I always tell you, put these in the possibilities and probabilities. What I say you do is you act to the worst state that you could be in. You respond through that and the rest will take care of themselves. And so if you do follow a certain path that's within the black and white, it can't be said that you are actually acting outside the constraints of even what a military commander could discuss, whether you know he's there or she's there or not. Emergency laws and regulations, moving up to a thousand, page 1054, emergency laws and regulations, many states have laws permitting the government to alter or suspend laws, such as the declaration of martial law and the establishment of curfews and other controls on the movement of persons in traffic to enact emergency regulations such as establishment of monetary and trade regulations or the rationing of food, fuel, and other critical materials and to take other steps to protect the public such as the issuance of identification cards, the development of detention rules for members of non-state armed groups, and the establishment of special emergency courts. Did you hear everything going on in COVID here, folks? Did you? I don't know that there's one thing I read there that isn't what's going on underneath COVID. The full range of actions of the state, this is the capital S state. I, didn't get, I don't know if I went and found out whether this is the district state or whether this is the state of several, sev, a union of several states. 
that was the United States of America, distinct from the United States, the government, the place and district, the full range of actions that a state may take under its domestic law during a non-international armed conflict would be would depend on the content of the law, including applicable constitutional restrictions. There's your license to be able to put the constitutional restrictions notwithstanding an occupation. In particular, there's no armed conflict unless we're, the arms we're talking about are the ones that are going to be injected by that vaccine that they want. And they're going to get it, too, because none of you understand really want to, what I'm saying, or you're not putting it in practice, or you're not working with it to understand it, because there's part of that, too. You have to work with it in order to understand some of the nuances. Let me move on down to a footnote. For example, David Galua, a Pacific, a Pacification of Pacification of Algeria, the RAND Corporation document 2016, uh, 2006, excuse me, in the existing legal framework, proclamation of martial law was the only provision in the case of disturbance endangering, endangering the security of the state. It would have en entailed handing over all the powers of the military authority and suspending private and public liberties. When you're told to, to be locked down, when you're told to quarantine without a cause, are your of your rights, public and public, public and private liberties, been suspended? should not even be a question. That really is rhetorical. And when you see that, it means you're in a military government. Especially where there's no cause. If you don't get that, that's why I keep telling you, look for the test. There's no test. It means that there's no cause. There's no reason for it. It just be. It just is. Moving down further, down the doc or through the document, military commissions have also been used for trial of offenses under U.S. law where local courts are not open and acting where martial law applies, and for the trial of violations of our occupation ordinances. These military commissions have been regarded as, instru in, as instrumentalities for the, for the more efficient execution of war powers vested in Congress and the powers vested in the President as Commander-in-Chief in war. Military commissions have been used instead of courts martial because U.S. courts martial have been adapted to the circumstances of disciplining members of armed forces and have not been crafted with a view towards certain and uh, other offenses that are also committed during armed conflict. So what if this commander from Washington made the U.S. territorial courts and the state courts territorial courts and they are now sitting in place of courts martial to do the things that make it look like it's a civil government. You couldn't tell. There's no way you can tell by looking in. I think you, some of you know how that's being noticed to you, but it's not going to make you any good to notice it to them. You just have to take notice, and it's that gold fringe on that flag, isn't it? And when you argue about it, it doesn't matter, does it? Does it? And so, stop arguing. Just understand the condition and start to move through it. How? Go understand international law relative to your relationship with an occupier and or the power that is making those decisions. And you truncate the military power. As I've said, you start getting into the international law and the law of war and neutrals, and pretty soon you start figuring out that you can't be shown, if you're a neutral, you can't be shown to be non-essential. How's that? Look at that, too. That's what that, that's doing, the non-essential, essential stuff. Then going on here, it's, uh, I'm just dropping off, folks, without qualifying. It's a little bit hard. I, it was so much to read. I just wanted to drop off and show you little fraction, fragments of this so you can start to get the idea. The words are here when you properly apply without limita without a limitation or prejudice from you. You start to see that you can you can put all the sticky notes of what's going on in the world today right into this document that sits inside the manual of the Department of War, Law of War manual. Uh, it's uh, this authority that this is the same as the authority for making the waging war for the exercise of military government and martial law. The commission is simply an instrumentality for the more efficient execution of the war power vested in Congress. Restating that point that we are into judicial, uh, execu excuse me, executive expedience. The Libra Code, moving further down, the Libra Code establishes rules governing martial law 
military uh, jurisdiction, the treatment of spies and deserters, and the treatment of POWs. Many key law of war principles, such as the principle of military necessity, were codified in the Libra Code. If you think I have the Libra Code linked to uh, the Avalon Project's uh, copy uh, down on my bottom of my web page for no good reason, this document references it completely. I don't care what that attorney in 2010 said. The military's working through this. That the federal government, the administration, the executive branch threw it out so that they can make it more expedient what that president declares for the military is totally different. Let me keep moving. Like I said, there's so much. I, it, this would be like reading the, the Libra Code all over again, but 1,200 pages of it. So I, I, don't, I can't really do that. I just know if those of you with a mind and a focus, you start reading through, just going through the... Look, searching out martial law and read the paragraphs before and the paragraphs way following going through like a couple pages you're going to start i hope you'd start to see what i've been talking about written right in these documents that you can when you can replace what you see in the world in the city in your town wherever in the nation today and it can replace a term or a word or a condition in this document and you start wipe you start blacking marking off as a check mark all the things that would constitute a def definition underneath a martial law or a martial government, you will have your paperwork here marked out. It will fulfill every bit of it. At that point, if you ever get to that point, and you see this, I really would have to question whether and how you can maintain the same prejudices and deny this is a very big probability. And once you see that, that would have to then inform you on how you're going how you have to start relooking at what you're seeing in order to figure out the condition that you're in. And a, and a part of me wants to say, yeah, well, that, everyone's going to say, oh, that's too much work. If you understood this was a real invasion, would you defend your families or not? Is really the point. I don't know what you think you're capable or not capable. I'm not a marksman. I'm not a, well, uh, okay, I do all right. But I'm not a sniper. I'm not trained that way. But if this was an invasion, I'm sure I'd be doing whatever I could. All right, so this is where we're at, actually. If you would, I'm saying that ahead of time before you actually do the work to understand what I see, what I've seen for decades. When I came across this stuff, it was, it was a real revelation at the point of what engagement, how, what, why things would fail was answered when I started to see this. And when I started to adjust as I, under, as I could understand, adjust what I was doing relative to the standard here of what is given over to the occupier and then looking very to the narrow path of what is not, that's what I started to key in on and that's what I started to do. And it just happened. I don't know why. Maybe it's the same technique. It happened to work exactly against this 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 alternative dispute incursion happens to work exactly against the bar association i believe the bar association is a military public private contractor that makes the false front of the courts that you're dealing with and it's all why policy runs and very hard to get the law in however they can't make it obvious so those of you the more you speak in the black and white and not in the procedural side but i mean your rights and you don't bring stuff that gives them the advantage and you bring your evidence, it makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for them to get around that. Let me read a couple bit more, a bits more here. Um, uh, by the law of war. I see. I think I might have been through. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Okay, so that's enough. I went right back to the top of the page, uh, top of the document. I read off some things, kind of quick. If you listened, even within those small and short quotes, you should see the things that you can mark off uh, that's happening today under this thing called COVID, under this thing called the common cold, under this thing called uh, coronavirus, under the thing called SARS-CoV-2, under the thing that's being used as a as a whipping post to extract from it the the common the the seasonal flu, the numbers that they need, and it's being moving an agenda that looks like a war maneuver under war government, or a military government. Even though you can't really look at it and see that. It's not obvious. This is the trick. This is how this is how they've really done this. This is how the alternative dispute works as well. It's why it, it, it goes it moves right in and I can apply these same techniques in dealing with a martial government, if you will, a policy governance 
uh, as well. You hear these same words coming out with the uh, Agenda Sustainable Development, Agenda 21 stuff. The fact also that the Libra Code, when I was talking about property, has to regard it, but there's no guarantees. There's nothing really holding this thing together. What it ends up being, again, and it gets us back, what it ends up being is those inhabitants and residents that not start to find out without the notice that they've been under something. Why Virginia became such a big deal? Because they had the mass of the inhabitants going all organ, well, almost organized to actually press what was supposed to be pressed, and yet that failed. It still is the example for us. It's the example for COVID. It's the example for the stocking horse called COVID. It's the example for all this stuff that everyone sees as a fraud. Whatever name you put on it, quit, mar quit marginalizing yourself by using those simple little cutenesses in terms that you want to limit what that thing is really doing. You, if you, once you see that it's wrong, you can't. You got to stop complaining that it's making harms. Go l figure out what you need to do to stop it. If you're the first one to put your shoulder on the wagon, then go walk there, lean on that wagon, whether or not you can budge it out of the ditch, and ask for help. I've got this and this. I need someone to go here. I need this and this. I need some. I need this and what do you here? I got some information. Uh, I hear you say, what do you have relative to what I need? We have to start acting back, working together. In a way, I'm a pacifist. I don't want to get into fights. I really don't. But, but folks, don't. That's one thing the people in my life who tried to come against me and harm me found out real fast that I don't really put much stock in it. But when you come after me, you better bring better than an A game. I don't know, and that's not high talk because I'm not that tough. But, but you, if we people in this nation would figure out we have an attack going on, this is for real, and understand that our families are, are under attack, and this is a very peculiar attack. Maybe we would not give it such lip service that I see going on on the Internet. And one of the things bringing in the intelligence of, that needs to be had in the military is underpinning all of this. Why we see con military contractors, you know, maybe it's an astonishment. You say, oh, the Bar Association be a military contract. I don't know. Well, you, you'll, you'll accept that maybe Google or Microsoft is. The AI organization, another long time tab I've had in part I don't even know why I have this except for the titles always tell me what what's going on if you don't think that these uh, these entities you know, these corporate uh, government um, tools instrumentalities are for the intelligence gathering you're missing that point once you see this is a military consequence when you see it in a military consequence uh, mode you'll realize exactly what this internet of things is why Rumsfeld was one of the first people they asked about it and he gave the answer but here we have today and underneath AI artificial intelligence folks that's just pattern recognition do not give this thing the, the power that COVID has uh, I know you are but but I mean not, not just dismissive of it I I mean we have to now really become the example of short brief factual statement against some of this stuff. But Google, Facebook, Neuralink sued for weaponized AI tech transfers, complicity to genocide in China, and endangering humanity with misuse of AI. This is an, a, a story from the uh, middle December of last, uh, the end of last year. I couldn't get to it. I think other people have covered a bit of this. You know, I won't cover it too much. It's up to you to hear this was going on. This case was actually a little bit too expansive for me. It kind of covered a little bit of too much terrain relative to a lawsuit. I don't even know where this went. I don't even know what's happened with it. My point was, within what it's identifying, someone took the time to, if you will, itemize the conditions that are happening relative to these corporations, relative to the uh, uh, weaponizing of artificial intelligence. Uh, they want to bring in the complicity of genocide in China. That seems to start go go too far relative to how you, what you really have to focus on where you are locally. What this does do is give you you the intelligence that their intelligence lines, the military government's intelligence lines, are being fortified. That's the infrastructure. They're going to use technology that's excellent at putting patterns together. That's excellent in tracking you down. It's what I've been telling you about silent weapons or quiet wars. You take give you all the Internet of Things toys so that they can do that against you and so th again when the when they came up with ai it wasn't about how they you communicate it's only about how they're going to get data from you and or their transportation 
uh, uh, structure. And if you went to the World Bank tool books, transportation is a very big, big deal with these people. But within this Google uh, AI tech transfers, within the 5G, within this technology, it's war material, it's war infrastructure. If you at all give even a half credit to what I've said relative to the military's own document, war manual, and its references and how far back, you'll start to see the Internet of Things as, as the, other, the other tool pretty quickly. And then you see what I've been reporting on, and this came up with a response I had from an email on a placard for responding to vaccines, but it was uh, reminded to me uh, that these articles are here, and it came up that I was thinking in these lines, I thought I talked about this one, but in passing, that the, um, the in utilizing the body in, in order to do, um, well, data acquisition, and in this case also, in this case, it's now the, amplif the use of it to make, uh, to do mining, if you will, digital coin mining or digital data structuring, stake, uh, stakeholding, if you will. The use of your body to actually feed this system and I told, I've been telling you since I saw the movie back, I think, what is it, 1999, the, when I got out, walked out of that theater, I, I think it was that year, I said, The Matrix is not a movie. They're, they're telling everybody what's here, what's coming, and what they're going to be doing in order to get that. New bit, Microsoft Bitcoin mining system set to transform BTC mining. Forget that, folks. This is about getting stuff in you. I read some of the patents, and I didn't. I forgot to bring the links over, but... A newly approved patent for the Microsoft Bitcoin mining system is set to change the way people look at crypto mining operations. The latest patent by tech giants relates to a crypto mining system that rewards humans with cryptocurrency in lieu of performing physical tasks. The promising new Bitcoin mining system allows a lower computational power required to undertake crypto mining operations whilst the increasing with increasing processing speed you uh, and thank you for me for reminding me of this one i touched this in passing he reminded he said i didn't know this next one from he just says to let you know i didn't put that in the in the response to you uh at&t awarded patent for bitcoin powered subscriber server the infrastructure is going on to make your body connected to this system that corporate public private military contractors will be connected to. Uh, it's all here. For, I, I just looked at that. It uh, reminded me about that Microsoft patent. Uh, that was, uh, we talked about that months and months ago. It's sitting there. All this infrastructure is sitting there. Go ahead and plug into it, folks. You want that vaccine? The, you, they're going to get that vaccine. Why? Because of what? We also heard that Microsoft can do what? They can put all the information they need in, in DNA. They can uh, corrupt that blood we were talking about. That's the bill of attainder I told you to start looking a little bit into. Do your study. Be ahead of that. You're going to be able to probably, well, I say probably because you don't know. If there's no one else talking and you're the only example, they just get rid of the example. Not to fear anybody. doesn't stop me, but the point is that people get afraid of that. You have to know that. Once you know that, then you do things in certain ways. It's part of the one things I tell you. That's how the government doesn't know how to find me. In the legal sense, all right, so that there's not a lot of ways that they can actually uh, com make it look like things were normal and natural. You want to do a new normal over an old normal. The old normal is that you keep yourself private and you make sure there's nothing that they legally need in order to make it look like they're comporting with law. You out the criminal in their own act. But so they've got the sur uh, subscriber servers. How are they going to be a subscriber and it be decentralized, folks? How are they, when your body's wired for your actions and you're told in your social credit to do something, how are you going to decline? And when they start injecting their vaccinations that have these things in them that are the sensors that they need, how are you going to decline? And this is where this comes, uh, was uh, asked my opinion. I won't go through too much of, of the answer, maybe to the p a couple points just to show you. Remember I was talking about forms and how to be careful of them or something offered to you. It says how to decline, how to legally decline a vaccine. This all, this is what I was answering to when those other two previous articles started came up after a response. Uh, to uh, just thank you for reminding me uh, the de how to decline. Well, they had step one, step two, step three, and then a, and then there was a paragraph. In, in fact, folks, it, you know, you read over as I said before, you can read over this stuff pretty quickly, and it looks good on the first view. And at one level, it got me. I said, okay, good. This is something to give somebody something 
for somebody to, to do. But when you start really analyzing some of this, you really have to be careful what you agree to. And I want to just hit a couple points. Point uh, on this, just to show you, relative to forms or buying into people's views and not having an awareness of what may actually be out there or searching for it or understanding to search for it, uh, the step, well, how to legally decline a, va a vaccine. Why am I even brought, bringing that up relative to this? Because Bill Gates wants to get a vaccine for you. What is it? It's a brand new RNA uh, RNA vaccine. It's never been tested. None of those things are tested safe. You know that by the product data sheet. And so, so there, so you don't want you don't want to get that. And this is what the, the danger about this is. Because as I, as I close this discussion, folks, you can't even agree to this situation relative to offering a conditional acceptance because it doesn't protect you from the harm. Why would you accept something you can find in proof is no good? But step one here says do not, do not refuse a vaccine, otherwise you'll be considered a belligerent. Instead, you can politely decline their services by doing the following, which is what keyed me on actually talking about this, which I wasn't going to do, it, is the word belligerent. What did I just read from the military, the military manual? That you're already considered a belligerent. And yesterday, before I saw that, uh, going through that manual, I answered uh, as a, a, a counter to that statement, encountering that statement, where have vaccines enjoyed a right of imposition? There is nothing to refuse in one's required bel belligerence to trespass under color of authority. And if you go back and listen to what I said at the beginning and then what I said there, you'll, you hope you start to see there's a way to approach this that doesn't buy in and that there's a condition you're trying to be sold out of, either that the person who wrote this, the one who wrote this doesn't understand, or it's a setup for you. You have to be belligerent on your rights. It sounds bad, but that's what's required. Because as an inhabitant, you don't know that you're not considered a belligerent anyway. Step two, uh, ask the doctor if the vaccine has MR. Uh, C5 in it. Uh, okay, then it says, if it does, you have a right to decline. Well, uh, my observation on that was, uh, why make a question of something legally noticed as harm? Why ask if MRC5 is in a vaccine the product data info or science already admits? For example, and they go on to step three a bit here with latrogenic reaction, which is the reaction to multiple drugs in your system. That's not a question. And I say, and if the doctor decides to say he doesn't know that the CDC authority and best science says it's safe, where's the right to decline? Wouldn't it be better than a, isn't a better foundational no that you make coming out of the gate a better answer? And then I say, see, trespass. So you, you're already in trespass. They're already trespassing you. And so, there's, again, I'm going to run out of time here. There's a couple of steps. Be careful on what you're told on the Internet what to do. Really sit down and think. When you put yourself in the, when you understand what I said about the military governance over this, and you start putting your mind in that terminology, when you read this thing and someone avoids belligerent, when you're already presumed one, in fact, an enemy combatant underneath this thing, you had better had a be you better have a better thought about how you're approaching what you read, what you're being told, maybe even why. Maybe and most people don't know this, so most likely the answers to you are going to be incorrect. That's a hard work thing, I'll tell you, but it's doable. You can figure it out. I've been here for over ten years, and I just realized we blew through another anniversary at Real Liberty Media, uh, with the broadcast being on this network. But a, week, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. But at any rate, I've been telling you about how this works for all of us. Thank you, Grimner, for what you have done over this time at reallibertymedia.com and uh, keeping everything floating for us and uh, over at uh, ucy.tv. Thank you for the continued simulcast, The Ghost in the Machine. Appreciate that for more words to people in, in all the now the new distribution that's going on. Thank you for all the hard work going out to get the word out to people. I appreciate all that. Big time, a big ability to pull, pull P together, I hope. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. another lesson. 
I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.